So you need help setting up your Webull trading application. What's going on guys? It's Ricky with TechBit Solutions and that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in this video, step-by-step -step for the 2024 update. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. If you guys have not already downloaded the Webull trading application, in my opinion, it's the best, it's commission-free and they are continuously updating and advancing their trading platform both on desktop and on mobile. Right now, if you use my link, which is linked in the description, with an initial deposit of only five bucks. Five bucks will earn you up to 12 free shares when you sign up right now with the second link in the description down below. If you are coming from my Instagram, I sent you that link directly to your inbox. And if you don't already have it, then again, it's linked in the description of this video. No excuses. So once you download Webull, once you're approved, and once you have your account, you might be asking, holy smokes, just like the iPhone when you first got it, it's extremely overwhelming. Like there's so much going on. How do I set this up? What is this for? What is that for? Calm down. Again, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step exactly how to use this platform. So the first thing you're going to do is when you click on the st uh, stocks tab, as you can see right on over here, it's going to take you to this window. It might not look exactly like this. This is how I have mine set up. And I want to explain to you that these are all widgets. You can actually hold and drag these widgets and move them in different areas uh, depending on what best suits you. For me, I like how mine looks right here. I have my positions tab here. So when it comes down to, uh, let's talk about the trade that I took on Robinhood today. On Robinhood, again, if I wanna see my position, then again, I just open up that positions tab and then I add it right on over here and I can see exactly my position, Robinhood, it's a stock. This was the last and most recent price after market hours. And this is how much money I made today, $30,500. It was a really good day. This is not an average day. This is uh, considered a quotes widget, right? These are all different widgets. So this is obviously the trade widget. There's the time and sales widget. There's the order book widget. This tells me where people are buying and selling. And then this is the actual charts. You can add, remove, and edit widgets just by clicking on the little three dots on the right hand side. You click on add widgets. They have these quick little tabs here, or you click on all widgets and you can really just go down the list. You can look at the you know quotes widget. So there's like the charts, which again is this main area. There's the options. If you want to trade options, I would not recommend it for beginners, but again, that's up to you. I personally do not. Quotes, which is again, what you see here on the right hand side. If you want to add that quotes tab, then again, you're able to add it. Key statistic, which again, tells you a little bit more about the stock and the application uh, or the, I mean, the stock that you're personally trading. Uh, this is the time and sales. This is what you see here on the right hand side. This is telling me kind of like the order book, the order flow of, you know, the number um, of orders coming in or coming out. This is the volume analysis. I don't use it too, too much, but I do have it set up on a secondary tab. If you want to overlap these tabs, it's super simple. You just hold and you drag it right above that tab and it makes it a column right within that tab. So now you have two tabs to go through. You can see that I have the positions tab. I have my notes tab. I also have the order tab. Uh, so again, you can kind of mess around with it and become a little bit more familiar with it. The positions tab again is something that you can set up yourself. So when it comes down to trade, there's the positions tab, which you can add right on over here, right? So the really cool thing about this is that Webull not only shows you the tab and the ability to add it, but also it gives you a very brief description of what each tab is. You can go down the list of everything. I mean, literally everything. You guys can see that I have an orders tab. If you want to add it, it's going to pop it up right here. So once you get the widget, if I were to click here, it's going to open it like this. And then I just drag this little widget and I drag it to exactly where I want to. Obviously, I don't need two of them. So I'm going to exit that out. Um, but again, this is where you add and remove all of the widgets uh, very, very quickly. Uh, this is obviously all of the stocks that I have here on my watch list. You can create different watch lists by being able to... Um, if I'm not mistaken, let me go ahead and um, yeah, you click on edit watch list and you can create your own. So you can add watch lists, remove watch lists and all that stuff. So you can add a watch list here and then begin to remove stocks. How do you add stocks to that watch list? Super simple. Let's say that I want to add QQQ to a new watch list. You can click on following or you can click on it again and then star it on whichever watch list you want to add that stock to. So the really cool thing about that is that it makes it very easy to add a handful of them very quickly. If I want to add SPY to my different watch list, I currently have it right now on my long-term investments, but maybe I also want to add it to my swing trade. Then I just click start and it adds it to that watch list. If I ever want to remove it, then I can just remove it from there or actually go to that watch list, right click it and then click delete and it removes that stock off of my watch list. Very simple. So I'm able to click on the stock and then right when I click on it, it shows me it because Exactly what it is that I just clicked on. So you can go down the list um, 
and see you know all these different stocks and it should reflect directly on this chart uh, the really cool thing about this is that you know I have specific indicators set up again just because I have these indicators set up does not mean that you need to but I want to show you exactly where you add these indicators so you can go right on over here and it should have this little um, I'm sorry let me go ahead and pull it up right now. So it's this little indicators tab under charts. So you click on indicators and I have the EMA, the moving average, the MACD, the RSI, or I can click on indicators and it pulls up all of the ones that are most commonly chosen. I can also go to indicator settings and it provides with uh, for me a full on list of different in indicators and I can mess with these settings. So if you're trying to become familiar with what my settings are on my EMA, I have a length of 45, which is my preference, and then I change it to this color. And if you need a brief kind of like introduction to what this indicator is, please take some time and read it. Then I also have the moving average, quick introduction. My style is green, and then the input is that I have it at a length of 200. You can have more than one EMA, as you can add multiple ones of these. And then when you just click on style and you activate it if you want another one. I don't want and don't need multiple different indicators. I, I feel like sometimes when you add too many indicators to your charts, uh, they call it like indicator paralysis, like technical paralysis. It's it's uh, overwhelming and they end up contradicting one another. So my focus is always just to try to keep it as minimal as possible. Uh, and the only other one that I have on the actual charts is the super trend indicator, which again is just one that I'm messing with and I have default settings on that. So again, my input is seven to three, the style. And if you want to learn more about it, it pretty much just gives you buy and sell signals depending on again, what specific parameter you have set up. I also have the MACD and the RSI, which is what you see right on over here. The RSI indicator tells you if something is oversold or overbought, if it's below the 30 RSI, it's considered oversold. If it's above the 70 RSI, it's considered overbought. The MACD is an indicator that, again, gives you a better understanding of when a re potential reversal might be forming based off of these MACD bars and when it's beginning to curl on over. Again, not, there's not one indicator that you see on my chart that's 100% accurate 100% of the time. So I want to remind you that indicators are to be used as a reference, never as a sole reason on when and why to take a trade. You can see down here that you have specific intervals. These are considered time frames. These time frames give you a different perspective. So again, every candle that you might see here, if I'm on the one minute time frame, that means every candle here represents one minute of time. If I click on the five minute, that now means that every candle represents five minutes of times, uh, five minutes of time and again um, so forth and so on right so if i click on the four hour every candle represents four hours of time and then on the day chart every candle represents one day the great thing about this is that again by looking at different time frames you get different perspectives of how this stock is performing i can see that oh wow qqq on the day chart you know i can look back all the way back to 2022 2021 i can get a much larger and a uh, perspective of how QQQ, which is the NASDAQ ETF, is trading. I could see its you know, downward trends that it's had in the past. I can see its upward trends. I can see that it's a little bit more on the overbought side. It's approaching previous highs. Okay, but if I were to zoom in and maybe look at the five minute, I don't see all of that. I just see that it's kind of trading sideways and it's testing a resistance that it's had in the past before as of yesterday. But this is why, again, when you're performing a technical analysis, you want to look at different time frames to get different perspectives so you can make a more informed decision. And you can see that based off of the indicators that I have set up, it's not too overwhelming, right? So that's the charts. Those are the indicators that I have set up. Um, and those are the different time frames. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you is how do you buy and sell a stock? Very, very simple. You can use market orders or you can use limit orders. Those are the most simple ways. You enter the amount of shares that you want and then during normal trading hours. So market orders means that you're able to buy the stock at the current market price, which again is easy to do. But if you want a very specific you know, price that you want to enter at or a very specific price that you want to sell at, then you use limit orders. And it's pretty much the same thing, but you just control the actual price that you want to buy in at or sell at. So again, if you want to be more specific uh, to your entry and to your exit, uh, there's this tab right here that you can use to ex include extended hours. And depending on your settings, uh, right off the bat, you might not have access to extended hours. So your charts, when you look at them, might look something like this. And if that's the case, that just means that you have to turn on EXT, which stands for extended hours. Extended hours represents the time before the market opens and after the market opens, which is about four hours on average pre or after market hours. Uh, and there tends to be some, of course, trading activity. So if you want to be able to have access to that and be able to see it, then you have to turn on your EXT to have access to that and to also be able to initiate an order during those extended hours. Then you click include, include extended hours and you can only buy and sell with limit orders. You can't do it with market orders. That is a rule across all trading platforms. But again, 
depending on the stock that you're looking at, uh, kind of like I did today with Robinhood. So Robinhood, again, this is the market price. This is what it's trading at after market hours. This is the trading volume. Again, this is a lot of information that you're not always paying attention to every moment or every minute of the day. I want to remind you that just like when you first got your smartphone, it was very overwhelming because there's so many different futures in the very beginning. But just like now that you need to send out a text message, you know exactly what application to go to, even though there's an abundance of applications, and you know exactly where to go to be able to send that application, uh, send that message to whoever it is that you want to send it to. And that's exactly what, again, this will be like once you become more familiar with the platform. When I go, want to go search for a stock, I know exactly that I can click on this search tab and be like, hey, I want to look AMC, uh, look up AMC, AMC gapped up today, and I want to make sure that I make myself aware of you know, the activity that's going on. Uh, if I want to look up a different stock or I want to add a different indicator, I want to add you know, a different um, feature, then again, that's all done with the widgets, that's all done with the indicators, um, and you can all mess around with it. So again, the more you mess around with it, the more you become familiar with it. And one of the things that I would really encourage you to do is if you haven't done so already, it's called paper trading. Paper trading is a free way to be able to test the market with free money, but be able to test the market with real stocks. So you're able to trade all the same stocks that I am, but you do it with fake money, but you can gain real experience. So a lot of people, this is where they make the mistake. They don't treat paper trading like it's real or they don't take it seriously and guess what when they make the transition from paper money to real money they end up really struggling because they didn't treat it serious right you're choosing to be here this is not something that someone asked you to uh, or is making you watch it's probably because you've shown interest in wanting to learn more about the market and that's exactly what i want this to be is that if you're someone that's really wanting to take this seriously then do just that and take it serious and, and you know, the concepts that you are learning uh, and the time that you are putting in and the progress that you are making. There's no such thing as perfection in this market. It's only progress and you're never going to be perfect. Uh, it's never about getting in at the lowest price point or selling at the highest price point. It's just about getting in when it makes sense and selling for a good price point. This all will begin to make a little bit more sense as you spend a little bit more time in the market. And again, at least for myself, I always learn best by watching other people do. And that's why our live trading sessions are so important. So I'll go ahead and if you're coming from my Instagram, I'm probably going to send you a message uh, in a few hours, but the whole point of my live trading sessions is that I trade live privately every morning with my LPP team. They get to see every entry I take and every exit I take. So imagine waking up every morning where you get to see my screen, you get to see me just like this, but you see me actively trading and you see me sharing my thought process behind every trade I take. The value behind those trading sessions are not to copy what it is that I'm doing, but to understand the thought process that led to that entry, that led to that exit, right? And that's exactly what we do every single morning. So if you're really trying to take your trading to the next level, I'd love to invite you to our live trading session. Um, and again, all you need to do is you can click the link down in the description. You can sign up for LPP and you can watch me trade live as soon as tomorrow. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And if not, I hope that I earned a thumbs up. Share this video with someone that you think that will benefit from it. Uh, and do not forget to subscribe as I would love to, you know, keep you up to date with what the stock market has to offer. And again, if you have any questions, please do not be a stranger. Send me a direct message right now via Discord or via Instagram. And that is all linked in the description down below. I appreciate your time. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care team.